What's up YouTube, welcome back to the Wall of Monkey channel. Today we're gonna be diving into Boeing Credit Union. This is BECU.org. This is a top five bank. So here's what to expect in this video. We're gonna go through all the data points, all the sauce, and then we're gonna talk about the health of the credit union, kind of like what we've been doing in these deep dive credit union videos. If you like that sort of thing, well then stick around and hit the like button, get a coffee, get a snack, and uh, let's dive in. Out of the gates, uh, BECU is membership based. I joined this like I think two years ago or more. They started out just targeting Boeing employees. They had branches on Boeing properties and now they've branched out and they started going after Washington. That that was kind of the next thing. And now they're going with um, and they're targeting out of state. So they have 1.3 million members right now. And like I said, they're a top five credit union. So let's uh, let's dive in here. Eligibility, like understand you're gonna have a harder time if you're out of state, out of like their target state area. You're gonna have a harder time with, they literally call it the financial crimes unit. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. So they have a financial crimes unit and um, you're gonna have a hard time. You're gonna have to send in a lot of stuff. So I'm just telling you that now, but hey, we'll get into more of that in just a little bit. But here's here's all the, uh, the ways that you can get in. I think I got in through Northwest Credit Union Foundation right here, or maybe something else, I'm not sure. But yeah, you can get in. They got many ways in. So that's that out of the gates. They pull check systems to get in. There's no hard pull for membership. The credit score minimum is 620. Uh, they pull TransUnion. FICO 8, and the hard pull is good for 30 days. People have reported that you can get up to, maybe even more, three products. You're gonna get a hard pull for your first credit card and for a credit limit increase. So a lot of people got their first card, they also got a personal loan, and then a personal line of credit. I like this trifecta, and, and you'll see when we break down more of the details. You have to call in though, and talk to a rep and not try and do it online. Otherwise, it will be another hard pull. So literally, yes, that means you call in three times. Call in the first time, triggers the hard pull, call in again, get the uh, loan, call in again, get the line of credit, right? Or the credit limit increase. Now, how soon should you pull the trigger after joining the bank? If you're out of state, give it like a week or two. Because regardless, like you could apply right away and you're gonna get approved, but you're gonna get triggered by the financial crimes unit and then you're gonna have to send in all the stuff that you would normally have to send in anyways. Expect that you're gonna have to send in proof of income, social security number, utility bills, quite a bit. And again, like I said, we're gonna get into that in just a minute, but especially out of state, you're gonna get like conditionally approved for these cards and you're gonna get your limits and everything and everything's gonna seem fine and good. And then you're gonna to go to use it or you go to get it and activate it. And that's when they kind of lock it all down and then force you to go through the um, financial crimes unit to get everything handled. So another thing that I saw that was pretty common with some people is that the, like how you could access online while the application was submitted and all that trying to get approved, it, it gets trickier and harder for you to navigate, especially if you have a brand new account. That's why it's like, look, get it all set up, give it like a week and then apply for the card. So if you try and do all that back to back, then you start getting locked out of your own account and then you can't get back to where you're supposed to upload documents. Um, there's even reports that up until 2020, they were still making you fax stuff in. Once you got pushed to the financial crimes unit, I don't know if that's changed or not. Um, hopefully they've got like some sort of uh, uploading, you know, mechanism, some secured upload piece that they can do. But anyways, let's continue. Uh, they actually use CoreLogic uh, to verify housing data. So if you have a brand new build or a new build within like the last 12 months, like your house, you might actually have huge issues with verifying your housing address. Like they might start asking you questions about like what are your property taxes amount, things like that, because in CoreLogic, they actually don't have that data yet. Understand that's why you might be having a lot of issues in general with getting approval on cards is the address mismatch piece with CoreLogic is probably affecting a lot more of your credit applications than you realize. Secured cards versus unsecured. Let's talk about that really quick. There's really no difference. And the reason why is because you're gonna get dinged for a secured card, a hard pull, and then once it goes unsecured, you're gonna get hit again. And considering it's similar underwriting process, like why bother? Just go unsecured right out of the gates. They are bankruptcy friendly, but you should wait at least 12 months after discharge to try and apply. Uh, heard many stories of people getting approved for good limits too. Just like with Navy Fed, uh, maximum exposure. Well, there's one here too. It's it's good though. So max exposure across their Visa cards, which I think all they have is Visa cards. They've got the cash back card. They've got the low interest, the low rate card. Okay, basically across all their cards, uh, you can get $40,000. But a lot of users reported that through late 2021, through early to mid 2022, many of them were getting automatic credit limit increases and they're over 50,000 now. Someone called in and a rep actually confirmed that their policy for maximum revolving credit that they will issue is $40,000 across 
all their cards, which are the are just currently Visa products right now. But the exceptions are these older users that got these automatic credit limit increases. Some of them are uh, over 50, like 50,600, et cetera. So 50,000 is the cutoff for them. But again, just like anything else, rules are not really rules. They're just more like soft guidelines. Okay, so that's what you can expect there. But it gets sweet once you start adding in the personal lines of credit and the loans, right? So if I can go get $25,000 loan and then a $10,000 personal line of credit, well, now we're almost at 100K, right? And I know places like Navy Fed, you can squeeze a couple hundred thousand out of them, but you know, this isn't too bad either. All right, next let's talk about the financial crimes department. I think I called it unit before, sorry. It's financial crimes department. Either get through this really smooth or it's like a black hole. And, uh, and you never get out of it. I mean, there's there are some threads that I read while I was researching all this that was like, it took weeks and weeks and weeks. This reminds me of, um, what was it called? I think it was called Bellico or Belco. It was a bank in Colorado and holy crap, did we go through the ringer with them and then never got approved at the end. Oh, that was a horrible experience. Here's the data that you're gonna have to provide if you get snagged by the FC department, which you will if you're out of state. Okay, they're gonna ask you for ID front and back. They're gonna ask you for social security number, six months of pay stubs and two years of tax returns. But what was weird is with some people, they were actually asking for the raw 1040. Now, I have my own assumptions on this, I just wonder if they're trying to make sure like what type of 1040, because I don't know if you know this, but there's different types of 1040 forms. And some of them you're tax ineligible because you're a foreign national. And that's actually not that hard of a status to get. And so I'm wondering if that's why they wanted to get it to make sure like tax denomination essentially you are and go from there. But again, that's just my personal opinion. I have no clue. Yeah, we covered the cards. I mean, pretty straightforward. Uh, the membership is actually really easy to get. You'll get instant approval online. You can go do that right now and you can get that up and, and running and wait, let that season up if you're in the garden right now. You can check out their cards for yourself. I'm not gonna go through them. They do offer the secured card like I mentioned and in the partner visa, let's just quickly look at that. Cool, they got airplanes on some of them. I don't know if this is with all visa cards. I'm pretty sure it is, but this is pretty crazy. Like look at all the additional benefits. ID navigator powered by Norton LifeLock. Again, the ID theft stuff is huge, man. You guys gotta get in on that if you haven't already um, with all the security breaches that are happening now on a regular basis. Extended warranty protection, roadside dispatch, 500,000 worldwide automatic travel accident insurance. Didn't know that. Travel and emergency assistance services, price protection, lost luggage reimbursement, baggage delay protection, trip cancellation, trip interruption coverage. I think this is just exclusive to this card. I don't remember reading this with some of the Visa cards I've got, but yeah, anyway, so they literally break everything down with these cards. Okay, so let's talk data points now. All right, so data points, got a few here for you. First one, they had two credit cards already. There were $6,000 on each. They basically got them right around the time when they got a membership. And again, this was pre-2020, so there's almost two different points in time similar to other credit unions we've talked about. And pre-2020, there was a lot less information you had to provide after 2020. And the financial crimes department, there's a whole lot more that you have to submit now. So he had two credit cards. He basically split a $12,000 approval into two cards and just left it at that. When he first got approved for membership, get this, he was 695-ish, 80% utilization across credit cards, 85K in income. Okay, so the credit limit increase, first off, was from 6,000 to 13,500. Then called in, uh, got the uh, personal loan next, which was 25,000 at a 9.9% .9 rate. Called in again, got the third piece, which all this was on one hard pull, remember. Um, personal line of credit, for 10,000 at 12% rate. That's a pretty good stack right there, man. I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, I, I like that a lot. And when they got all of that done, uh, they had a 701 score, 10 inquiries on the profile, 46% utilization, income showing at 140,000. They had to provide social security number, last two years of W-2 and tax filing 1040, the tax filing 1040 itself, last six months of pay stubs, and that was it. Okay, next one. Opened an account in branch, checking savings. Two weeks later, he was out of state, visited in state, opened it while he was in state in person. Two weeks later, app for the credit card and personal line of credit, got approved for $20,000, had to provide all that information and then get it unlocked. So some patterns that I noticed is they are not utilization sensitive, uh, inquiry sensitive at all, clearly from, from those two examples. They also seem to put a lot of weight on either using other products in their ecosystem, so some sort of internal scoring mechanism or transactional data tracking that they're doing, and or um, good income. And since they're asking you for literally every piece of your life with the income, you can assume that like because of that and they know that you're financially solid from a DTI standpoint, that's probably, you know, what was accounting for these these higher limits. So it seems like they're very generous with limits. Again, if 
you've got good income and or using products within the ecosystem. So that was just kind of my, the patterns that I picked up on, right? Okay, next and lastly, let's finish up with the health rating. So this is the fifth largest credit union in the United States of America, and it has a health rating of A. We're gonna go through the Texas ratio, deposit growth and capitalization, just like we usually do. They have 29.52 billion in assets. Loaned out is 15.42 billion. Deposits, 26.37 billion. Yeah, I mean, real estate owned zero. That's interesting. They owned real estate in 2021, but got rid of it. Okay, uh, they opened up in 1935. They have 2,500 employees. Like I said, they've got uh, 1.3 million members. As of June 30th, 2022, uh, Boeing employees credit union had 22.76 million in non-current loans and owned real estate with 2.23 billion in equity and loan loss allowances on hand to cover it. This gives Boeing a Texas ratio of 1.02%, which is excellent. Next, deposit growth. Let's take a look at that. In the past year, BECU has increased its total non-broker deposits by 1.91 billion, resulting in 7.82% growth for the year. Woo, that's strong. That is very, very strong. Okay, capitalization. BECU has 29.52 billion in assets and 2.23 billion in equity, resulting in a capitalization level of 7.56%, which is below average. There you go, C minus. That's actually what brought it down the most, hey, in, uh, in its health score. So 59 locations, I don't know. You can dig through the rest if you want. This is just depositaccounts.com and uh, it's gonna give you all the goods on this. So there you have it. Everything you need to know about BECU before you decide to pull the trigger. I mean, did I miss anything? Cause I'm pretty sure I literally covered everything. <laughs> Comment below. Hey, you should subscribe. 60% of you are not subscribed yet, right there. Okay, bye.